Dear Mr. Scully, Mac rules the world. Your Mac friend, Brent Rambo. Today I'm going to show you how to get more FPS on your Ryzen system for free. You teasing me, you naughty naughty. <laughs> Will we overclock the GPU? Well, a thing that could be done, but no. Will we overclock the CPU? Not really, as it brings almost no benefits nowadays. So, what will we do? RAM overclocking. And to be precise, it is not RAM overclocking since we're not actually raising any frequencies, but instead we're tweaking the timings, timings and sub-timings. And don't get me wrong, because they all benefit from higher RAM frequencies, of course, but not as much as they do from tweaked timings and sub-timings. At least, of course, from the Ryzen 3000 series and above. As I've shown in some previous videos I made with DDR4 and DDR5 frequencies and timings, the timings and sub-timings usually deliver more performance and frequency itself when it comes to CPU-dependent scenarios like, for example, competitive gaming or RTS games like Total War series, for example, and that's because as soon as you reduce the timings and sub-timings, you reduce the inner latencies. With lower latencies, way more data can be interchanged in between the CPU and RAM, usually leading to more FPS output. And now you might be thinking that this process will be very hard to do and in some cases it might lead to lots of issues, lots of problems and possibly a lot of time lost for nothing of course. But I can tell you right away that that might not be the case as we have very easy ways to tweak our RAM. And yet not as easy as buying from today's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings, and you'll have an activated system. First of all, you need to know what dyes are inside your RAM kits. For that, you download the software called Typhoon Burner, by the way, it does not require any installation, then extract it and run the executable file. As soon as the software opens, go to the EEPROM tab, or maybe just the read tab, and pick the two options in the end, one of the two options in the end. In case you have four RAM sticks, you'll have four options. But just pick one of them if your RAM sticks are all equal. And finally there, it will show you what kind of die you have inside your RAM kit. It might be Samsung, it might be Hynix, it might be Micron, whatever. And in case you have a Ryzen 5000 series or below, you can use the Ryzen DRAM calculator to reach something close to the timings your RAM kit should be able to support based on the die it has. And then all you have to do is take a photo of those timings and apply them one by one on your BIOS DRAM settings. And if you have a Ryzen 7000 series using DDR5, well, it gets much easier. Buildzoid has been making some really solid tutorials on RAM tweaking for Hynix and Samsung dies, and from my experience, they're basically plug and play. On my Vcolor Manta X Sky, by the way, thanks Vcolor for sending the kit, which is basically the one being used on this video for the for the benchmarks, of course, for the side-by-side -side comparisons. Uh, well, on this kit, which features Hynix chips, it was basically once again plug and play. I did exactly what I did on my J-Skill Flare X5, so exactly the same timings as Buildzoid said, and it was just go in, put the timings, and it was stable. I basically ignored the main timings and went straight to the sub-timings, copy-pasting all the numbers Buildzoid shown in the video, and both kits were 100% stable after going a full test with Memtest 5, also giving absolutely no issues after that. So it is not sure that it will 100% work for you, but it most likely will, just find the die you have inside your RAM kit, apply the values, stress test with testmem 5, and done. Done. And even if you have a Samsung kit or a Micron kit, you can just go to Buildzoid's YouTube channel, uh, which is amazing in terms of overclocking and so on. The guy really, really understands what he's talking about. He's really, really deep into that. That's his thing, let's say that. Um, so just go there and you have videos for almost everything. Just follow his steps and you'll most likely have no issues whatsoever. And with all the blah, blah, blah done, what about the performance? Is it really worth the hassle? You tell me. 
Starting with the results, we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and you can immediately see the performance difference. The bias default sets timings too high, creating latency, but doesn't do that bad actually. But even there, we can see that the Expo profile pushes much more FPS, something that gets even better with the tweaked sub timings, meaning that if you were getting around, let's say, 200 average FPS with your settings, you could get 18 more FPS on average which is not that bad at all, not that bad, it's free performance. And Far Cry 6 is an easier to show scenario, as this game engine loves lower timings, hence the bias default option, the ones applying things like CL50, which is insane, does fairly worse compared to the normal Expo profile. The tweaked sub timings profile though is the one that delivers more gains being 16% faster than the bias defaults and around 9% faster than the Expo profile. Of course, on this V-Caller RAM kit. Also, sometimes the GPU is at 100% usage, but you're still being bottlenecked, so I advise you to always look at the power draw instead. And no better game to show that than PUBG. If you look at the power draw, both from the CPU and GPU, you can see that the higher the FPS numbers, the higher the power draw on the Ryzen 5 7600X, and the higher the power draw on the RX 7900XTX as well. And that's because our RAM has lower latency now, being able to interchange more data with the CPU, that will be able to feed more data to the GPU. Hence, why we're having higher FPS and higher power draw as well. In this game, we get up to 13% performance increase by tweaking the sub-timings and 23% increase over the BIOS defaults. Very good results, actually. And now with Ratchet & Clank using max settings as well, and, well, this is a much heavier game on the GPU side than the previous games, and what usually happens is that FPS increase provided by tweaking the RAM will only be shown in situations where the CPU is the bottleneck. Like I explained in my previous RAM frequency videos that you can see passing right now on the screen, with links in the description as well, if your GPU is the bottleneck, the RAM timings won't show any noticeable difference. But if you're playing competitive games where people usually use lower settings to push the maximum FPS possible, let's say Counter-Strike 2, Valorant, League of Legends, Apex Legends, etc. Or, for example, in really heavy RTS games like Total War series, CD Skyline series or even games like the Rift Breaker, then the CPU and RAM performance will matter a lot. And you'll definitely want to tweak your RAM sub timings to give that little extra boost and in some cases you can go up to 20% performance increase over your XMP slash Expo settings. So, for me, it's a no-brainer. And I just showed you the, the four games on side-by-side -side comparisons because I didn't want to make this video way longer than it should be. If you want to watch uh, more data, more packed up data, more games, several games uh, with several RAM frequencies, with several RAM timings, then go to these videos passing right now on the screen where we have uh, lots of info packed, 12, 13, 14 games tested, PUBG, Fortnite and so on, in several systems being DDR5 or DDR4, uh, in, even in Intel CPUs, Ryzen CPUs and so on, to show you that the timings and frequencies make the difference a lot in some scenarios, but not much difference in others. It depends. And just to finalize, you might be trying to ask me, was it really worth it? Well, for me, it is. And especially with the DDR5 Hynix kits, it was really, really worth it because all I had to do is go uh, to the Buildzoid video, copy the sub-timings, paste the sub-timings on, on my BIOS settings, sorry, Portuguese was taking over, on my BIOS settings, just go there, copy, the, um, copy and paste the values, test with testmem 5 and things were completely stable. Just raise the RAM voltage to from 135 to maybe 138, 139, perfectly stable. Buildzoid also tells you that, of course. Um, and and it, it will be stable. Just one, two, three hours uh, of testmem if you want to do it, uh, three or four full cycles, and it was perfectly stable. So I just got free performance, literally free performance, uh, out of the blue with my DDR5 kits, and I did the same previously with DDR4. It was uh, it was not as easy, but Buildzoid also has videos for that. Uh, 
Uh, and I just got performance on my Ryzen 3000 series and 5000 series once again in CPU bound scenarios, especially in higher FPS numbers or once again in really heavy CPU titles, let's say like Hitman 3, uh, uh, things with lots of AI, once again RTS games, MOBA games and so on. But nonetheless, it's free performance. You spend your time, time is money of course, but if you don't mind spending your time and you actually want to learn, this is a good thing for you. Free performance uh, and you learn at the same time. That's what I did. And well guys, that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, hit like, subscribe and share this video as that really helps a lot. And I guess, yes, I guess I see you in the next one. Uh, that will be the Adrenaline versus the Pro Drivers. I just wanted to make this, this one first. Then it will be the Adrenaline versus Pro Drivers. And the new GPU comparison is also in the making. So yeah, more videos will come in a short period of time. Uh, I did not release a video in four days because, well, I had things to do because everyone has a life. Anyway, thank you very much and see you in the next video, guys. Cheers. Oh, 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 oh,